Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Pokemon Soul Silver. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. As always, I myself am doing pretty good. If you did not catch the last episode, I would definitely recommend it. We started our journey, got our Totodile, and made it to Violet City. In this episode, we're going to explore Violet City a little bit. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So up here we have the Sprout Tower, which is always a fun area to go into. I don't know why. I like I like how uh, Johto is pretty dang Japan <laughs> compared to the other Japanese regions. In case you don't know, the first four are based on uh, Japan as a country, and there are different regions in Japan. And this one definitely has the most Japanese-inspired artwork and type of buildings and stuff like that. So I'm always excited to play Johto because, you know, I like acting like I'm traveling to different places, but I'm not really because that's too hard and costs money. But instead we're playing on my Super DS, having a fun time with our Totodile named Jaws. And wow, we are actually a really high level. I just realized that we are level 11. That is pretty dang high right now. I mean, if you can see from the low levels of Johto, we are currently facing level threes, which is basically what you'd find in the first route of the game. And we're fighting them in a trainer battle in the first city, which normally these people would be like maybe level 9 or 10-ish. So, it's a little weird to see that. I don't know. Uh, we may be a little too OP, but it's okay because we are trying to get Jaws as high as possible in levels. I always tend to like over-level my Pokemon just because I enjoy trainer battles a ton. And of course, I feel like if I don't do them, I'm kind of wasting the game and stuff like that. So I try and do trainer battles as much as humanly possible, but there may be times in Johto where we need to ignore trainers or um, train up a lower leveled Pokemon because it is super easy to get over leveled in Johto, I would definitely say. I have a fond memory of one of my friends in elementary school having a copy of, I think it was Soul Silver, and he had a like level 60 Typhlosion by the end of the game. That is overpowered. <laughs> so yeah, you guys probably will see us kind of truck through this game in many ways because uh, it, well the levels are lower than normal already but also halfway through the game there's a bit of a split path and in both directions the Pokemon are basically the same level so we, we will be going through one and kind of doing good and getting over leveled then the other one we will definitely be under or over leveled for sure so yeah watch out for that it'll be a lot of fun and also, guys, I'm trying to keep the energy up, but if I seem tired and more chill than normal, it's because I am exhausted today. Um, I record these a bit of advance, and if I can break the fourth wall for a second, today was my last day of my summer job. And it was a half day, but I was still exhausted afterwards. So after this, I'm probably going to take a little slumber, and then maybe never wake up. We'll see. You guys, This may be the last video you guys ever see from me. We'll have to wait and find out. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a restful Monday when this goes out. Or if you're watching this later, I hope you're having a good whatever day it is. Uh, it probably ends with Y, so that's that's a safe assumption for days of the week. But yeah, I am excited to start my school year, actually, which is coming up. A lot of people get way more busy during the school year, but for me, I feel like I get less busy. Just because during the summer I work 40 hours and then... During the school year, normally, you know, when you're in college, you can, especially when you get older and you become like a senior, which is what I am this year. I'm a senior in college. What's up? I'm playing Pokemon on YouTube. Yes, it's embarrassing. Whatever. But no, no, I don't get embarrassed by it. <laughs> but um, yeah, whenever you get older, like in high school and college, it seems like the, it seems like the, even though the work is probably more, you're a lot more comfortable with it. So you're cool with whatever. But yeah. I'm excited to start this next chapter in my livelihood, and I'm so excited for you guys to come along with me. But of course, I will still be playing Pokemon, just as always, and nothing will really change, so... Woo! Let's go. It'll be outstanding. Ooh, we actually got Bite, which is an amazing move. So Bite is a Dark-type move, and it does more damage than Scratch. That'll probably be our go-to move for a while. But Dark is good against Psychic and Ghost-types, which is... Amazing for us, excuse me. I love getting bite. Yeah, Jaws is putting in the work so far. I, I I hate to make comparisons, but compared to Juno, I feel like Jaws may 
be a better starter. I mean, it's kind of what I assume in this game. Because Superior's great, of course, but it's not super strong, but for Alligator, just kind of destroys everything. So picking Totodile from a random number gen was probably the best situation we could have been in, but a lot of people love Cyndaquil, me included. Cyndaquil is an amazing Pokemon, and I don't want to devalue it by any means. Wow, that Vine Whip did nothing. That's actually the first super effective move we've gotten hit by this whole playthrough, I think. And it did 6 damage out of 36. That's insane. Yeah, even though Jaws is minus defense nature, it seems like he is still bulky as heck, which is amazing for us. We will take that any day of the week, for sure. But I love, love, love the Sprout Tower because I like the atmosphere. I like how Bell Sprout's like the only Pokemon you can fight. That's really funny. And I also really like the play uh, NPCs in here, the little monk guys. I don't know if monk is the right word, but I'm going with it. They're really cool and I love fighting them. They're so much fun. And Sage Neal is down. Let's go. Looks like we have one more trainer before we can fight the sage at the end of the tower. So, lots of fun. Now this guy does change it up a little bit. Even though this is called Sprout Tower, this guy right here doesn't have all Bell Sprouts, which honestly I don't vibe with. I mean, if you're going to be in Sprout Tower, you got to be the Bell Sprout champion. Get that out of there if you're playing anything else. Wow, level 14. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actually, fun fact, in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, if you play through Violet City, you do not need to go to the Sprout Tower. It is an optional area, but in this game, it is required, which going in it is a good reason, or is a good method of playing, no matter what I'd say, because, you know, you can get more levels, and of course, you can get the Flash TM, which is always nice, but a lot of people like to skip it, but I've always played it, even when I'm playing, like, Chikorita or Totodile, ones that aren't really good against the Pokemon that we're fighting. Oh my gosh, I forgot our rival's name is Jay. That is hilarious. Jay, I will defeat you. And guys, fun fact, that is actually what Jay looks like in real life. He has long, flowing, luscious red hair. And if he ever says anything otherwise, don't believe him. Do not believe him. And here we go. We got the final Sage. Now this guy used to scare me as a kid. Every time I was like at the end of an area and there was a trainer, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. But nowadays I realize that, wow, this guy's easy and we're gonna defeat him. Well, I I'm saying that, but hopefully I, I won't just, you know, come in here and then get one hit. That would suck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would be really funny, actually. I would enjoy that. I don't really care about my misfortunes in these playthroughs or anything. I think they're hilarious. Like me dying to Bugsy, that was funny as crap. I loved that. That was hilarious. Jeez. And that was before I knew about pausing recordings on OBS, which yes, I use OBS. And there's this weird setting thing you had to change to make it so you can pause recordings in the middle of your recording, which is nice. I do that a bit. I mean, I think during the post games, the only time I really used it and when playing Pokemon White, but I may use it sometimes in this. But it was funny because I lost to Bugsy, and instead of being like, I'll be right back with Bugsy, I just said, we'll do another area, and I just won't stop recording. <laughs> but I enjoy the unedited content because, well, it's easier for me. <laughs> but also, I don't know, I, I just like the nostalgic type of feel that it gives, you know. Like back in the day when people made Pokemon Let's Plays, of course they had a much better layout than I do. But I don't really care enough to do sprites every episode and change them when Pokemon evolve and stuff. I'm not the... I'm not super into that, it's okay. And he's learning Scary Face, which drops the opponent's speed, but we will not be using that because speed doesn't really matter at the moment, so we're good. And by the time it will matter, we will most likely have way better moves, so yeah. And we got the TM for Flash, amazing. So yeah, this will eliminate caves, and funnily enough, this is actually a TM in this game, and TMs do break after one use. So with Flash in particular, you want to be really careful that you put that on a Pokemon that can use it to its best ability, because if I remember correctly, you actually need Flash pretty late in the game. So that's interesting. But real quick, since we are in Violet City, I want to do a little detour. Something that I'm not sure a lot of people know about, but this is actually something you can do in the game. 
So there's this guy here and he will give you a bit of a quiz. And if you answer specific things, he will give you certain things. And I want these Pokemon eggs that you can actually get. This is the only way that you can get Slugma um, when you're playing the game before you beat the Elite Four. And you can get a Mareep and Wooper. Let's do the Mareep first. So yeah, we need to respond with specific things based on our, ch our trainer ID. And off camera, I did go ahead and get that and look up what the answers needed to be. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this just cause I enjoy getting eggs and free Pokemon. It's really fun. And then, okay. Yeah, we have, we have more responses, my bad. I thought that was it. A girl, her, which is funny. <laughs> but yeah, there's online, um, online generators for the answers you need and stuff based on your trainer ID. And I think it's really cool. I went ahead and did that. So yeah, we will go ahead and get an egg, which is cool. A Marie egg it goes ahead and tells you, that's nice. And we have two more to get. But yeah, if you're playing this game and want to use these Pokemon, I mean, I'd recommend it. I don't know exactly why you'd use the Wooper and Mareep egg, but the Slugma egg is super useful. It's just kind of weird that they give away these eggs. I don't know. Well, I don't know if they know any like cool moves or anything like that. I assume they don't, but they give them out right before you can catch them. So I don't know. I mean, theoretically, you could get the Mareep egg and be super effective against the first gym leader, which is cool, but you will have to, you'll, you'll have to, um, hatch the egg and train it up a little bit before, which I don't think is really worth it unless you're using a Chikorita and you just cannot beat anything. Uh, people dog on Chikorita, but I love it quite a bit. I love Chikorita. It's a fun Pokemon. We need information. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the code things are always so weird. And on top of this, you can actually get wallpapers for your PC. I'm not going to do that because... Uh, this playthrough's not really meant for me going in the PC a ton. <laughs> We're just using like a main team and that's basically it. But yeah. Now we have the Slugma Egg, which is the one that I definitely would recommend doing. And I need to play through this game with Slugma. Sadly, we aren't going to use any of these Pokemon in this playthrough. Um, Mareep is pretty basic and I've used it a ton. Uh, we already have a Totodile, so we don't need Wooper. And Slugma, we're actually going to get a different fire type. And yeah, it should be fun. And also, Macargo's not the best Pokemon ever. Like, it's fine. And the fact that it's doubly weak to water and ground isn't the worst thing ever, but it still is not amazing whatsoever. So I'd be really careful with that. And there we go. Those are all the codes that we need, all the eggs that we need. And yeah, even though we're not going to use them on the team, I think it's really cool to show this because I would definitely re recommend this for any trainer who's playing this game. So yeah, we got our eggs. So actually our party's pretty full at this point. Look at that. We have four Pokemon before the first gym. Let's go ahead and heal up, by the way. I completely forgot to do that. <laughs> I don't know if I've been in a Pokemon Center yet. I, I'm pretty sure I have, right? If not, then check it out. This is what a Pokemon Center looks like. <laughs> pretty sure I have, though. I, I'd, I'd probably bet on that. I forget a lot of things. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but I don't have the best memory. But I feel like no human has a good memory and everyone thinks that their memory is awful. So I will stop being basic and say, I forget stuff every now and then and that's okay. <laughs> that's always a funny way to enter the gym. Jeez, I love Generation 4. As a kid, I wasn't the biggest fan of Diamond and Pearl because I never played Platinum. And I feel like Diamond and Pearl still are amazing games aside from Platinum. And they have their own merits to play and I enjoy them a ton. But after playing Platinum, it's like, whoa, Sinnoh really clicks with you. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But yeah, as a kid, I always said that as a whole, Generation 3 was my favorite. Because, well, at the time, I don't even think Generation 6 was completed when I made this a little, um, this little assumption. But I said Generation 3 was my favorite because Ruby Sapphire, Emerald, and Fire Red Leaf Green, and of course the spinoff GameCube games, which are amazing, but I didn't really count that at the time. And the reason I didn't say Generation 4 was because I wasn't the biggest fan of Sinnoh. And I loved HeartGold Soul Silver a ton. But I was like, I don't know if they can really carry this generation for the most part. So for a while, I said Generation 3 was my favorite. Now I think Generation 4 is probably the best Pokemon generation. I mean, I would say Gen 5, but Black 2, White 2 kind of feels samey compared to Black and White. Which, 
in many ways, it's good, you know, being able to revisit a generation again, but it also feels weird doing it outside of a remake, you know? It's just, I don't know, it just feels odd to me. Now, something Pokemon Company will probably do that I'm expecting is they'll remake Black and White, but not Black and White 2. So, just like they did with Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. But yeah, we have Faulkner up here, and he is the first gym leader, who is a flying type, if you have not noticed already. And he is a weird, weird trainer. Uh, for some reason, in Generation 2, the gym leaders don't use Pokemon that really makes sense for them. It's hard to explain. But for example, Faulkner, rather than using Hoot Hoot or anything cool like that, he uses a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto. So that's what he's working with, and we gotta beat him up. It's just so weird, I don't know. It's crazy. There it is, Pidgeotto. He's so weird. Okay, we're good. This Pidgeotto is scary though, because even though it's weak, it is an evolved Pokemon. Oh, critical hit, nice. Okay, yeah. So Faulkner's TM is Roost. And he uses Roost a ton. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy. You need to kind of pray for a crit or anything cool like that, which, of course, we did just get a crit. So that sucks that we already kind of used that up. But, yeah. Now, something we could resort to is Spamming Rage, which is a move that does more damage the more you get hit. But we won't need to, because apparently Faulkner won't use Potions and won't use Roost. So, we just win like that. You know, that was a lot closer than I thought. I wasn't really worried for my life or anything, but we did get kind of low on HP, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. I like struggling in gym battles and stuff like that. But GG. I would say he did a good job because he was underleveled, but he did have a Pidgeotto. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's pretty safe to say that we kind of clutched in the end. So yeah. We got the Zephyr Badge, which is always a really cool badge name for me. Because it's the first flying badge that ever existed in Pokemon. And they went with Zephyr. And I think that's a really cool move. And we got the TM for Roost. Which, if we have a flying type later in the playthrough, we may use it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. No spoilers. And he tells us to go to Azalea Town, which is the next town in order. So it's, it kind of makes sense to go there, you know. But now, we get a call from Professor Elm. Yes, using the Poke Edge. It's amazing. So basically what he's saying is that his assistant is in the Pokemart and he wants us to get an item from him, which is interesting. And here he is. He looks like a big nerd. Love him. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what Don's dad looks like in Diamond Pearl Platinum? I think so. They did use a ton of assets, or reuse a ton of assets, but you can kind of, kind of you can't really blame them, you know? You can understand. Sweet. So we got an egg, which is outstanding. We now have, what, four eggs? That's so funny. We're not doing a an egg lock or anything, I promise. And hey, look, it's a Kimono Girl. In the original Generation 2 games, the Kimono Girls are barely in it. Like, they they fight you in the, in the dance studio, and I think that's it. But in HeartGold Soul Silver, luckily, they do have a much more pivotal role, which I was always a big fan of, because... I think they're really cool characters that were kind of wasted in many ways, but I'm really happy that we could use them, you know? It's amazing. So yeah, let's heal up. Whew, one badge down already in episode two. That's insane. I'm kind of feeling a quick playthrough here. <laughs> we'll see what happens though. There are some parts in Johto that go slower than others. Like something that comes to mind is, if you've ever played this game, after the seventh gym, when you do all the stuff with you know who, it's crazy. Uh, to our left is the ruins of Alf, but well, we're not really gonna mess with that because it's kind of useless if you've ever been there. But just know it's fun, and we could go there if we wanted to. But I'm good, so yeah. Oh my gosh, we got a miracle seed, which is just screaming Chikorita's bad. Here's a Miracle Seed. Please make it better. That's basically what they're saying. It would be nice to get a Mystic Water right now, but, you know, I guess that's not going to happen. <laughs> I love, love, love the type boosting moves, or <laughs> items, sorry. Type boosting items. 
If you could not tell from my white playthrough when I had one on every Pokemon, they were really nice to have, and they're just, you know, amazing to clutch with, and they boost damage slightly, but when you're really high level, it boosts it kind of a ton, so we'll take it. And this youngster has terrible Pokemon. A Zubat? You're bringing a Zubat to a Jaws fight? What's wrong with you? I forget if I mentioned, but Totodile evolves pretty soon, actually. Level 18 is its evolved level. So I'm excited for that. And hey, it's a Mareep. If you're playing Johto, you are going to use Mareep. I think there are a lot of cool electric types, like Chinchou immediately comes to mind. And I can't really think of any others. Uh, shoot. <laughs> there, there's probably some. I can't really think of anything, but Mareep is probably one of the coolest Johto Pokemon of all time. I love Mareep. It's a fun Pokemon. And we got a Repel. Nice. We'll be using that if we're ever sick of wild Pokemon, which will never happen. That's always funny. Yeah, that girl was on the phone and we just interrupted her. My bad. You think that with like huge phones that were made in 1999, people would have those, you know, just <laughs> big phones just in their ear and you'd be able to see, but I guess our trainer doesn't know what that's like, so. We can't really blame him though. You know, I'm a little awkward sometimes, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> so, we gotta watch out for that. And cool, Picnicker Liz is down. I'm not going to add you on your phone. Why would I do that? <laughs> Sorry, dude. Get out of here. I wish they had a morality system in this game like they do in Red Dead, where you can kind of just like accept people's calls, respond to them. You can uh, not take their phone number or anything like that. You can ignore people's calls. And I wish that affected how the world treated you. That would be so funny. Could you guys imagine? I'd be so bad. They'd be like, this guy has no friends. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but hey, we're at a little dock, and this is a cool place to farm some water Pokemon. But we are just going to use it because we want to farm every Pokemon, because we're probably going to get a Croconaw this episode. Insane right there. That's insane. Yeah, we are strong. Holy. And our attack stat's pretty dang amazing for this level. Especially having a Totodile, a first form Pokemon. Now a lot of people complain about the 3D, um, 3D models for Pokemon and how stilted they are. But one that I love is Totodiles. Have you guys have ever seen Totodiles in Gen 6 or 7? It's so cute. It's just like, it's, its face is kind of flat, like a crocodile would be, and it's just like bouncing back and forth. It's so cute. I always love it. And I'm pretty sure that's what it looked like in BDSP, so that was fun. I, I just love seeing those sprites, they're so nice. Now BDSP was a weird game, well I, I say that a lot, but the fact that it has the national decks in there after they got rid of the national decks is just weird to me. And I don't know, getting the legendary sucked in Romano's Park, that was the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And getting the starter sucked, I think it was Torchic that took me the longest, that one was awful. It's crazy, don't play BDSP. I probably will play BDSP on this, this channel eventually, so if I do, don't watch that playthrough. Just block it out and hold on for dear life and wait for a good playthrough to come. That would be amazing. These Magikarp trainers are getting on my last nerve. I'm pretty sure I talked about that in, when we were in Unova, about how I was glad there wasn't a Magikarp trainer, and then in Undela Town, there was actually a Magikarp trainer. That was awful. You just one-hit them for no XP. But at least we're learning how to battle, because I have no idea how to Pokemon battle. I've always wondered. Always, always, always wondered. Let's battle this guy as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I will say this, though. The water in HeartGold Soul Silver is beautiful. I, I, <laughs> there's a joke about the guy who went on Miiverse, which is which was a social media platform for Wii U when Nintendo supported that console. There was this guy who went on there and judged water in games, and that's me all the time. I'm like, that water looks good. I'd swim in that. I'd take a dip. I don't know. 
I'm good. Thank you, though. It's so funny. We'll come back to that guy. There's actually an item down here. Let's get that. Another bell sprout. Jeez, they want me to catch a bell sprout really bad, huh? Would be a good addition to the team, but I'm good. Sorry, bell sprout. And hey, we got bullet suit. So yeah, it looks like this route is really trying to get you to use grass types that are really good. I don't know. Wow, they just keep trying. Never stop. I keep dogging on Chikorita. This is the Chikorita hate episode, I guess, but Chikorita, one thing about it is there's, excuse me. <gasps> there's so many good grass types in Johto that picking Chikorita who is like, excuse me, oh my gosh. <laughs> picking Chikorita over them is kind of bad. Here, I'm gonna get my hiccups to go away. I'll be right back. Okay, I think they went away. And I don't want this to turn into the sneezing episode of Pokemon White and turn into the hiccup episode, but I think they're gone. It's like whenever you don't try to get rid of hiccups, they just go away. When you just ignore them, I think that's just the best way to do it. Wow, the slowdown's crazy right now. What the heck? What is that? <laughs> I'll try to look into that for the next episode, my bad. I thought I changed some of the settings to keep that from happening. I don't know, the Super DS is kind of weird. That's weird. Now it's just running better. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm recording or something. I I'm not sure. But I can do my best for you guys. I try my very best. And sometimes it doesn't work, but hey, it's okay. Lots of encounters right now. Holy. Now, Ekans is a Pokemon I've always wanted to use in a playthrough. I mean, look at it. It's so adorable. And like, pure poison types? I feel like I've never used a pure poison type in my life, other than the iconic Alpha Sapphire playthrough, where I use a Gulpin, and it turned into a Swallow. That was funny. I looked at its moveset, it was like, it was like, strength, and like, the funniest moves ever. I was like, what did I do here? That was an iconic playthrough. I had Swampert, Tropius, <laughs> Swallet, Aladius. That was mega. It was so funny. I was like, why did I ever play this? <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, wow, we're level 18. Who would have thought? Camper rolling, get out of here. Yeah, our starter's evolving. Episode 2. That's crazy. That's that's insane right there. Whew. And there we go. We got Krokona, who is beautiful. I love Krokona. It's one of the, I'd say, least awkward second stages of Pokemon, because some people think it looks pretty awkward. I'm in the camp that I think Crocodile is really freaking cool, especially with that Mohawk. I mean, come on. I think a lot of times they'll kind of over-exaggerate the features of middle stage Pokemon, just like this Crocodile, for example. But I feel like it's kind of for the best because, you know, it'll just look stubby and weird without it. Because I'm pretty sure for Alligator's um, type of spikes are way more propor <laughs> proportional to it. But Crocodile just looks so funny and cute. I love, love, love it. And hey, a youngster. <laughs> it's so weird calling people youngsters. I feel like an old man. You know, like, hey, youngster, get out of my lawn or whatever. I don't know. Gordon, oh my gosh. You forgot the lamb sauce. I'm sorry, I tried. I tried my darndest. I'm so sorry, guys. I apologize. No, not Mudsport. Even as a kid, I thought that was the stupidest move ever. I was like, who would ever use Mud Sport? It's so tough. And we gained some levels. Or XP. <laughs> Not levels. That would be funny if I gained levels from Youngster Gordon. Let's go down here. Now, this guy's actually funny. He's trying to sell us Slowpoke Tail for $1 million. 
which I'm pretty sure your money caps out at 999,999. So, <laughs> you can't ever get it. And it's sad. I want Slowpoke Tail. I want to eat it. I'm kidding. That's weird. I'm sorry. I give up. And we healed up our Pokemon. Always nice. And now we can head south. Let's fight this bird cat, bird keeper right here. <laughs> I'm excited to find bird keeper Toby, by the way, and camper Spencer. Bird keeper Peter. That's a name right there. That's so funny. That guy got bullied in middle school. Watch out. But now that we have a croconaut, actually, you guys may notice that it is a lot stronger. It is really strong. And so we're going to one hit basically everything with any move we'll use. So we'll take that. <laughs> then we got a Spiro and this guy's going to die. Just watch. Good game. Good game. And cool. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Pokemon Soul Silver, and I hope you guys can tune into the next episode where we go through this cave and we make it to the next town. I can't wait to see you guys there. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out.